Hello everyone, welcome to Desert Succulent. Today we're going to be featuring a succulent that is native to Mexico or Central America and this is our Echeveria Lola. Unlike for other succulents na yung kanilang leaves would be greenish or very colorful, itong ating succulent na to will be giving you this very simple na color. Yung kanyang delicate leaves would appear to be a mix of parang grayish white na may pagka light green and sometimes I can also see a tinge of pink to purplish na color sa kanyang leaves especially when it is stressed. Yung leaves niya will grow in the shape of a rosette and from the top you would really appreciate yung symmetrical na formation ng kanyang leaves that is very beautiful to look at. It's like yung kanyang leaves are overlapping towards each other. Another element that adds to its beauty is yung kanyang thick layer of wax sa kanyang leaves and that is what we call yung ating farina. Itong ating farina is not just about aesthetic purposes but also syempre it protects yung ating succulent against the rain and the sun. Once our Lola is mature and stable enough, it will be giving us a bright shade of pink and yellow na bell-shaped flowers. Tumutubo yung kanya mga flowers on a very long stalk and it's similar sa ating mga ibang Echeverias. Itong succulent na to grows best outdoors and if you are planning na ilagay siya sa isang area in your garden, you won't be having any problem with it kasi it's not invasive unlike for other succulents that they could actually take up the space of other plants. Because of how it looks, we might be tempted na ilagay nga siya indoors kung saan we can easily appreciate yung kanyang beauty. Unfortunately, itong succulent na to thrives well in full sunshine or in other words, we have to give them about 4 to 6 hours of sunlight every day or almost every day. Although a little bit of shade would also be beneficial for this, especially in very hot na climates and temperatures like us here in the Philippines during our dry or summer season. Personally, yung aking Lola, this is a hybrid Lola by the way, is located nga sa ating full sun area although that one is not a rain or shine area. Every morning, I usually bring this out para talagang maarawan siya all day long. Pero pag umulan na, pinapasok ko siya sa loob kasi I'm really afraid na yung ating rainwater na droplets would actually strip off some of its farina. I'm trying my best to preserve yung ating farina. It's supposed to look like this. Napaka-flawless niya if intact yung ating farina, it would look like that. Ayun, may mga scratches including this one. Ganyan yung kanyang itsura if nahawakan natin accidentally yung kanyang farina. Moreover, if we will be positioning this in a place kung saan it does not get direct sunlight, yung ating Lola will not be able to photosynthesize. And because of that one, it will now lead to the death of the plant. And kasi syempre, they also need yung ating sunlight for their optimal growth. You would also notice na yung ating mga Lola would become bigger and healthier during the hottest months of the year. So that's around March until May, kumbaga yun yung kanyang peak season of its growth. Like with other succulents, we should also be watering it only if yung kanyang soil is completely dry. So that's what we call yung ating soak and dry method. And as much as possible nga, we have to focus on watering itong ating pinaka soil, avoiding our main rosette or yung kanya mga leaves to avoid na matanggal some of its farina. So this succulent is nakalagay sa ating rain or shine area talagang naulanan siya and since it's already the rainy season you would be expecting na some of its leaves natanggal na talaga yung kanyang white coating or farina but still sanay naman na itong lola na ito under rain or shine kaya pinabayaan ko na lang siya doon except na lang pag dire-diretso na yung pag-uulan I'll try to make sure na covered yung top part nila para hindi naman sila ma-soak. As long as it's receiving sufficient amount of water, yung talaga hindi siya na dehydrate, then itong ating succulent will grow up to 6 inches tall and about 4 inches wide. You can pot your Lola in any pot that you wish. Just remember na itong ating mga succulents, while they are growing, we also need to give them some nutrients. Kasi syempre, if 1 year or 2 years na sila dito nga, sa kanilang pinaka soil eventually in a year or two years time they are already sitting in a poor nutrient soil kaya we have to change yung kanilang soil so that they can get rich nutrients 
from the new putting mix. In any case, that you are someone like me na hindi masyadong mahilig mag repot or kung mag repot man ako, I will be including yung kanyang old soil, mixing it with the new soil. Kaya ang ginagawa ko madalas is dinidiligan ko na lang nga siya ng ating liquid na fertilizer from Japan and that's enough to give it yung kanyang monthly nutrient needs. Propagating this kind of succulent is very simple. We can get some of its leaves. Pero if, for example, na ganito na basa yung ating succulent, as much as possible, we have to avoid propagating yung ating mga succulents if bagong dilig lang sila. Kasi, syempre, if we're gonna be removing some of the leaves or if we're gonna be having some stem cuttings, there would be an opened wound. And because of the moisture, possibly na mabulok yung ating mga succulents. Kaya, I will just be propagating itong ating two-headed na hybrid Lola. But first, syempre, we need to remove some of the dead leaves na nandun sa pinakababa. Ayan. There is a lot of them. It's part of the maintenance as well. May nakita rin tayong offsets na tumutubo dito sa kanyang pinakababa. We can also separate this if we want. But for today, I will just simply remove itong ating pinaka mother na rosette here. Kasi pag tinanggal natin ito, we will be giving a space for this new offset to grow and eventually, it would look like this again. Magiging parang two heads na naman yung kanyang itsura. And first, we need to remove some of the bottom leaves ng ating succulent. Ayan. Ganyan yung kanyang pinaka leaves. You would see yung U shape sa pinaka tips which means na successful yung pagkakakuha natin sa kanya. And sobrang daling tanggalin nung leaves nung ating lola from its stem. Walang kahirap-hirap. Kaya you can always propagate as many as you want. Ayan. Ganun lang siya. Kabilis. Ayan. So, you can air dry yung kanya mga leaves. And if you wanted to know more about leaf propagations, you can just watch our other vlogs as well. We will be cutting in this part. Ayan, clean cut lang siya. We can remove this. Ayan, tanggal din natin itong mga old leaves na nandyan. And also some of its leaves as well. Ayan, may aerial roots na din siyang tumubo. Air dry this for a couple of days before potting nga sa kanyang pinaka new pot. We were able to finally propagate itong ating hybrid Lola and I'm very excited na padamihin pa ito lalo including nga yung ating mga leaf na natanggal sa kanya. This one naman, we will be putting it in a bright shaded area and we would also be expecting na in the next coming weeks, new offsets would possibly grow kung saan tayo nag-cut sa kanya. And that's another way of propagating our Lola. Aside from removing yung ating mga dry leaves, we need to keep an eye out for our millibugs and other pests, especially if you have the habit of watering your succulents na nababasa yung kanilang mga leaves. Kasi pag nabasa rin yung mga dried leaves, you would be expecting na yung ating mga millibugs could pop up and breed. And also, yung ating fungal infection sa kanya, I usually treat them every 3 to 4 months as a prevention. I'm not so sure if you can still see it. Uh, there are just a few blue stains from our broad spectrum contact fungicide na ginagamit sa kanya. The last time na naglagi ako ng ating fungicide sa kanya was about 3 months ago. Ayan. And possibly ito. Ito na yung kanyang new growth in the span of three months. That's all for our Chiveria Lola. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You may also visit our Facebook page at Desert Succulent PH.